probably part of why you're seeing vaccinated people in the hospital. All right. Uh, now let's go over to Sergeant Paul Tapau. Good morning, Sarge. I don't know. I feel hey. like. I w- hey. Good morning. Yeah. Well, sorry. Good morning. Good morning, morning, morning. Uh, I went to the clinic yesterday to get tested, and, you know, we're talking about this booster. I wanted to almost just tell him, like, man, can you just give me, like, four shots of this stuff and just get it over with? I want to be good. I don't have to worry for, like, the next two years. We're good. But they're not doing the boosters yet, just so you know, Serge. Not at this, not at this September 20th. We're right. following uh, what's going on with the CDC and the FDA. Right. Um, Pfizer was approved as a FDA regulated um, vaccine now, so... Uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting. It is, because I got the Moderna in me. I don't know how my body would react to the Pfizer. Yeah. And that's kind of what we're waiting for, is to see if these other vaccines are going to get that uh, approval for the booster. Uh, Sarge, I know we talked about this yesterday, but we did have uh, Senator Tony uh, Anna on about this, uh, relative to this wedding that took place on Monday. Um, and it was revealed in a Facebook fo- post that uh, public health uh, inspectors uh, showed up at this wedding at Hamamoto Fruit World, and they were accompanied by armed SWAT officers, right? So did you want to kind of just react to that, give us a little statement on it? Yeah, absolutely. You're correct. Um, you know, this is a good, uh, good senator is correct about um, with the, um, you know, um, our efforts with the Guam Police Department. And again, you know, um, just a disclaimer, you know, I, I, I do know Mr. Mignola, uh, you know, it's a great friend. Uh, I've known him all my life and everything and understanding I did reach out to him, you know, after reading his post and stuff and try to bear, uh, you know, get, get some bearings as to what happened. And of course, expressing our, you know, um, you know, where, where we are, uh, with, you know, and our approach with the executive orders that are issued by our, you know, our, our governor, and of course the uh, the roles that the Guam Police Department has been playing since the onset of COVID uh, last year. So, um, you know, you are correct. We did, you know, our officers have been working with um, the Department of uh, Public Health and Social Service uh, since the onset of COVID, and um, the event, the wedding event, um, as part of what we've been doing with our COVID operation. Um, rather than tapping into our patrol officers, uh, you know, we, the acting police commander with the approval of Chief Stephen Ignacio, uh, formulated a plan where the um, SWAT officers, our special operators that are assigned to our special operations division, and of course our, our highway patrol investigators um, have been tasked to, to pretty much oversee the COVID operations in, since the onset of COVID and to where we are now. Um, we know that from the onset, we've been actually handling the, um, the QFAX, uh, the ISOFAC, the uh, commodity lines of our highway patrol guys, and of course our COVID response team in, in the, uh, you know, working with the DHSS uh, once they got spun up with the issuing of citation and now became the regulatory issuance of um, those in violation of the executive order. So yesterday, you know, on, on, on Monday, you know, our guys um, that showed up, you know, to assist with the uh, personnel from DPHSS are assigned to our special operations division. We want to make it known that, you know, our guys at SOD, you know, um, they weren't in their TAC gear, um, so to say, which pretty much associates SWAT officers with the other officers, is that they, um, you know, show up to a situation with their TAC gear. Um, just like what I'm wearing, casual, you know, um, just the top, you know, just a regular identifying plus our, you know, our, our, our credentials. And of course, you know, something that I've addressed on nature. It's really, it's really so that there's no intimidating factor, you know, so um, we showed up only to provide assistance uh, when the DHSS requests our assistance in, um, of course, helping them mitigate. And, you know, speaking with Mr. Mignola, you know, I, I understand and I hear his frustration and, you know, um, he had, everything planned out for the last two months in executing this event. Um, this mitigation plan is flawless because I explained to him yesterday too, having this conversation that when we too with the Guam Police Department, um, we had to formulate a mitigation plan um, with our events. And um, I, I want to applaud his efforts in you know, identifying those that are vaccinated as part of his guest list, um, taking the extra time in ensuring that temperature checks would be done the standard operating operations that you would have for any COVID operation. And it's just unfortunate that the executive order was passed in the, in the stage of the planning 
and of course the execution of the event. But you know, our, our intent was not to really um, shake everything down. Our intent was really to maintain the peace between the two parties, maintain order in allowing DPHSS personnel to really perform um, their duties. And of course, that's what's required with them and the execution of the executive order with the social gathering. And, you know, we've been, Chris, we've been working this, you know, um, when they close the beaches, when they close the parks and everything, we had an operation for that. When we were issuing the citation, um, you know, we had an operation for that. Like I said, you know, delivering the foods, making sure that the lines moved in accordance with, you know, uh, uh, anything that, that dealt with COVID, GPD was always in the forefront. And, you know, with the assistance with the Guam National Guard, um, putting everything into into fruition into how we're going to execute now. Um, this is how we move and how we operate. And of course, being able to adjust fire um, with the different types of you know the trend of COVID, being able to you know, understand the fluidity of COVID. You know, we at the Guam Police Department have been working really hard in being able to address the needs of the community, the safety and the concerns, and of course addressing the that of the you know dealing with COVID nineteen. Sarge, so did you say that they showed up just in their uh, GPD blouse, or were they like full on with the whole? No, just like what I'm wearing. Oh, okay. Just like exactly what I'm wearing. It's just a GPD identifying top. They weren't in uniform, so okay. it's just their. If you see, you know, our, our officers, right? And and you know, it's pretty much Guam is small. You know which officers assigned to what unit yeah. and everything. Yeah. So they weren't wearing any, any tacky gear. What we call our tactical gear. Tactical, gears. right? Yeah. Um, the coveralls and everything, the mask. And everything I'm familiar with it, Sarge. I've rolled out with the criminal justice uh, task force. <laughs> you know, when you see them knocking in a di- at three hour, you know, three o'clock in the morning, then and that's, that's a, a way story. different situation you don't want to be in. That's a way different situation. They're very cordial. You know, there is there is an association of understanding, um, you know, just acquaintance and stuff. So, you know, a lot of our officers, they do train. Uh, with Mr. Mendiola and uh, you know in jiu-jitsu, so you know yeah. they, there's there's an acquaintance, there's an understanding, and there's knowing. And again, you know, we like I said, you know, it's really having that discussion with Mr. Mendiola yesterday. I, I, I strongly, you know, I, I really felt his frustration and understanding. But you know, we want to convey this to the community that you know these are measures that are in place so that we can address what's happening with the surge now that we're seeing with from. Um, you know, with COVID and the, and the Delta variant. So, you know, um, since day one, since the onset of the COVID operation, just operation, the Guam Police Department has been in the forefront. Um, last year, 2020 was, was the first step and to where we are now. And it's really getting accustomed back into it when we lifted the restriction and it was 100% capacity and social gathering and everything. And now that we reinstilled the restriction, there's a different change in mood and a different change of behavior. So, you know, yeah. again, uh, nothing has changed uh, since day one. You know, we're still doing the same operation as we did um, as of last year. You know, obviously people are going to put these kind of comments in, uh, Sarge, so I don't know if you want to respond to this. Uh, Harvey comments in, SWAT officers at Amamoto Fruit World, GPD is so well staffed, they can send four SWAT officers to a wedding. Jeez, they couldn't send a reserve officer? If I may address that, you yeah, know, again, this, this this is the planning of, of course, our, our GPD management um, and, and understanding that we're not going to tap into patrol. We are not going to tap into patrol. Patrol is the daily needs of the community and seeing that where we can utilize our resources. So we have a 24 hour operation with our SOB personnel. We have, you know, at the, at the peak of COVID, we had a 24 hour operation with um, those officers that are, are available. And these are specialized officers such as our investigators from Highway Patrol Division. In utilizing them, we allow them to address the needs with the COVID operation. And of course, the needs should be event. Remember, these are special operators. In the call of a dime or drop of a dime, these guys need to activate and switch into squat mode. So being that having that readily available for the community and to assist patrol, um, you know, during the um, that, that homicide investigation with Ferreira and uh, uh, the stabbing incident, you know, our SWAT officers were working um they you know they weren't at home they weren't we didn't have to call and there was no delay in the response so we had a team um, that was gathering their information and ready to deploy so this is the advantages that we have so you know we, we play with it with a double-edged sword and how do we address the needs of the community and safeguarding that we maintain that and understanding that and safeguarding the needs of the community 
you cannot tap into control. I understand the optics, right? When you hear the word SWAT, right? Yeah. That's usually associated with the big guns, the big toys, with busting door, uh, doors down. And I just want to repeat again, this has always been our operation since day one. Our officers, our SWAT operators showed up. They weren't wearing their attack uniform. Um, just like what I'm wearing, a collared, collared shirt, identifying the one piece of army, khaki pants, you know, uh, nothing to really uh, cause any harm or, you know, any concern. But that's how the operation and the, the fluid motion in which we are able to adjust fire in the event the need, the need does call for our SWAT operators to respond to a situation that's going to require them to assist our patrol officers. So having them available is 24 operation and, you know, it, it, it serves to a, a dual purpose with um, the COVID operation and, of course, operations within the Guam Peace Department. Right. I know it's a struggle to, to thanks for that, Serge. I know it's a struggle to, um, you know, put the right officers uh, in the right place, right, at the at the right time. Uh, we did have another comment from uh, Marilyn here. What is happening to all the police officers? Dedito is a big village and there are only three officers. How do I know that? When I needed their help, they told me that and no officer ever showed up to help me. I had to take matters into my own hands. I um, hope you don't mean like crazy style, Marilyn, but yeah, Sarge, I mean, I know that we just graduated a, a bunch of recruits, but we're still looking at these 21. shortages, right? Yes, this was addressed with, uh, you know, Chief Steven Ignacio many times in the show. Yeah. Um, he has addressed our challenges and what we're facing. We are losing officers to, um, you know, bigger and better things, sort of say, right? Um, the, um, we're losing officers to the, to the Navy police. We're losing officers to local um, law enforcement agencies. But, you know, again, the operation plan really allows a one, one and four operation with the uh, availability for additional officers so that we can fulfill a one, one and six operation. Meaning to say that's one officer, one supervisor, and, you know, um, the right amount of officers that are out there should be a minimum of four and no more than six officers to patrol the respective area. Uh, we are faced with the challenges and it's being addressed. Um, you know, 21 officers um, had graduated uh, last week. Uh, I'm sorry, two weeks ago, and now we're looking at starting up another cycle, and this is very unique. Steve Ignacio had, uh, Chief Stephen Ignacio had mentioned that we're moving forward with a multi-agency cycle where we have, I think, 10 GPD, uh, 10 candidates that are going to be filling the position of police officers with the Guam Police Department, and also officers from that of the uh, Guam Airport Department of Correction, and I believe um, the Port Authority of Guam. So, you know, th this is new. We haven't done this since 1998, a multi-agency uh, um, academy. Um, so we're moving forward and we're gonna continue. Um, we're still continuing a hiring process. You know, if anybody who would like to um, fill the void, you know, you know, there's always openings at the Department of Administration and we're always looking for the right candidate, but addressing the needs and this understanding the safety of the community, um, you know, our acting police commander, Major Manny Chung, with the blessings of Stephen Ignacio, has endorsed that we are going to provide the peak coverage of one, one, and four personnel within the respective precinct to allow all officers to come in and their off time to accumulate overtime so that we can maximize it to a one, one, and six peak coverage. We are facing challenges, but we're also addressing the challenges. And this is, you know, again, it, it really falls in management and how we deploy our personnel. And again, understanding that we do have our SWAT officers that are 24 7 working the COVID operation and a drop of a dime. Uh, these guys can switch into police tactical mode and assist in the event our patrol officers should need to dial 911 and of course activate our SWAT officers. All right. Can, can you confirm, Sarge, if uh, four reserve officers were moved to executive uh, security? And is this kind of what you're talking about when you're really trying to manage the resources with the yeah. department? So I, I don't have the numbers as to where our, our reserve officers are assigned to, but understanding that a reserve officer, right, is, you know, they do have a life outside of GPD. Um, that means that they do have a, you know, outside employment. Um, they are mandated to fulfill a 42-hour 42 um, 42 completion a month. So how they come in and manage their time, it really is, you know, the availability of them coming in, you know, on, during the weekends, during their RDO, their regular RDOs, um, some officers can work a minimum of two, three hours. Some officers we see that come in on a daily basis and, you know, he's assigned to the Highway Patrol Division and he's been really instrumental in assisting there. And we also have officers that come in and fill the void where patrol needs 
um, to be assessed or need the void needs to be addressed at the patrol level. So seeing where the numbers are, Chris, I don't have the uh, um, the mapping of where the reserve personnel are deployed to. But again, you know, we want to let the community understand that reserve officers they come in to um, act, in, in, you know, with with the G, uh, GPD um, the GPD role only on, uh, when they have the availability of time on their hand. You know, like I said, some can come in at two hours of the day, and some can come in as as officers. I mean, they they come in regular hours, twelve hour shifts, man. These guys are pulling twelve hour shifts, so you know, um, I was once a reserve officer and. You know, being a reserve officer, I, I, I saw the, the um, you know, main holding two jobs and coming in and fulfilling an eight-hour shift was, was really daunting. Now that, you know, coupled with the family and kids, it's really yeah. being able to adjust and uh, manage the time accordingly. Are they paid hourly? No, you have to complete a 42-hour and there's a stipend that's a... Oh, and you get a stipend. Them. I see. Yeah, so, gotcha. you know, we are still looking for reserve officers, too. You know, um, it's a great career, you know. I mean, like I said, you know, I'm... Maybe you can use this for your, your recruitment line, you know, for the Guam Police Department that I started out as a job and turned into a career, now it's a profession. So, you know, seeing where we progress, it's really seeing the work that's put in. So, you know, we're looking for reserve officers. We have an active cycle that graduated uh, uh, two weeks ago, and now we're, we're actively, uh, you know, going to be starting our 12 uh, police officer training cycle. So there's a lot of progress and a lot of movement with the Guam Police Department in recruitment and, of course, retention. Sarge, uh, we did have some comment from uh, some of the ladies. They're asking if any of the SWAT officers are single so that they can throw a party and have them show up. <laughs> you know, we do have to, uh, um, you know, work in accordance with the executive order. 25 outside and 10. Um, you know, it's, again, you, you may not have the SWAT officers that are going to be accompanying uh, DPHSS. You may have the um, availability of our highway patrol officers right. or those that are assigned to the COVID operation. But, you know, we, um, you know, our, our purpose in really in, in dealing with and how we address our COVID operation is really to educate the community about the importance of social distancing. We've done it before. You know, a lot of people ask, you know, um, you guys were always on top of it, uh, how many citations were issued, but we, we give you a count of uh, how many, uh, in per, uh, you know, face-to-face uh, -face contact interaction and it's well over the top. Yeah, I want to say about 3,000 interactions in the first onset of COVID. And it was really more of an education platform, an education in how we can all do our part, what's needed to be done so that we can mitigate. And really, Shima mentioned it, it was spot on. And it's really just about behavior, uh, you know, how we modify our behavior and how we adjust accordingly to what is required from us as, you know, as a community. But um, whether you're going to have an event and hopefully the SWAT officers show up, I, I I don't know who's going to show up, you know. Don't chance it, guys, in other words. Sarge, thank you for your time this morning. Absolutely. It's good to see you guys. Always. You know, take care. It's been a minute. You yeah. Know, really great to hear you guys. You guys have uh, continued to provide information, and, you know, we continue this dialogue, and, you know, we, we want to be, uh, you know, Chief Ignacio has mentioned that we want to be as transparent. Yeah. Um, we do have him on the show pretty much on a weekly basis. So, you know, that's just, that's just his commitment you know, not just with the department, but also with his leadership as uh, the chief of the Guam Police Department. So thank you guys. Stay safe and God bless. Right on, Sarge. Thank you. Appreciate it. Sergeant Paul Tapao. Yeah, that's quite a story, though. Imagine if that was your wedding, right? How was your wedding day? Oh, well, funny story. <laughs> Everything was going fine, and then boom. All these SWAT guys show up with their too tight. You know, 